I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. His name is Linnaeus. Electrophorus electricus, Linnaeus. Here at the lab, we just call him Joe. He isn't exactly what you'd call a raving beauty, is he? But he has his points. For one thing, he's quite a swimmer. Notice the wave motion of the long ventral fin. As the waves travel toward the rear, the eel is propelled forward. Reverse, the waves travel toward the head. How about ascending and descending? Well, to ascend, he merely starts waves at the center, which go both ways. And to descend, the waves start at both ends and work toward the middle. Joe is commonly called an electric eel. But actually, it isn't an eel at all, but a fish of the carp or catfish family. Now, the eel part of his name may not be correct, but he sure came by the electric part honestly. There are stories of cattle, horses, even human beings being killed by the electric shock of eels just like this. In fact, along the Amazon River, ranchers have lost so many cattle that they have what they call electric eel drives. They herd the eels into shallow water and then uh, they kill them with their machetes. Oh yes, they have insulated handles on the machetes. Now, of course, electrical impulses can't be seen. But if we put an electrode at each end of the tank, we can hear the electrical discharge on a loudspeaker. Now, those gentle pulses are part of the eel's radar system. In some mysterious way, he uses them to locate his food. Now, so far as we know, all adult electric eels are blind. They have heavy cataracts on their eyes. Now, eels feed on small fish. And if it weren't for this radar system, they'd starve to death. Now, when an eel locates a fish or uh, when he is disturbed, he puts out what we call the double whammy. This is a terrific shock that stuns anything in the water nearby. The only way you can describe Joe's table manners is to say that they're downright shocking. unlike most fish, is an air breather. It must rise to the surface from time to time for air. For this reason, he can be quite comfortable out of water. Now, the vital organs of the electric eel are all in the front 10 inches of his body. The rest is pure power plant. And believe it or not, he can generate more than 500 volts. Here we have a bank of 36 neon lamps. We'll connect these to uh, our eel electrode. Now, of course, the eel is designed to operate in water. His electrical system doesn't function too well in air, but even under these conditions, he should give us enough power to light the lights. For some reason, people seem to find it difficult to believe that a fish can put out any considerable amount of power. Even some of the folks here at the laboratory been just a little bit skeptical about Joe's electrical prowess. And for that reason, we've asked a few of them if they wouldn't help us in an experiment. Will you have the group come in now, please? All right. Okay. You stand right over here, please. The rest of you just line up there. You're right over here, Mr. Humphrey. That's fine. Now, Dave, you'll take this, please, and hold it in your right hand. 